On the evening of February the 20th, 2003, excitement filled the air as people gathered at the station nightclub in West Warwick, Rhode Island. Concert goers, many of whom were fans of the rock band Great White, had eagerly anticipated a night of music and revelry. With tickets in hand and a sense of enthusiasm, they made their way into the club, oblivious to the tragedy that would soon unfold. In just a matter of minutes, their joyous expectations would be shattered, giving way to a horrific ordeal that would claim 100 lives and leave over 200 people injured. Nestled on the corner of Cosette Avenue and Coolis Road in West Warwick, Rhode Island, the station had a storied past. Built in 1946, the venue originally served as a gin mill. Over the decades, it transitioned into a restaurant, pub, and eventually a nightclub in 1991. It was purchased by brothers Michael and Jeffrey Dederian in 2000. Prior to the tragic event, it had been inspected twice, but glaringly overlooked was the flammable foam used for soundproofing. West Warwick Fire Marshal Dennis LaRocque missed this critical detail during his inspections. The club had a history of concerts with pyrotechnics, including a performance by a KISS tribute band in August 2002 that went off without a hitch. On February the 20th, 2003, Great White took the stage at 11.07pm. The venue was bursting at the seams, holding 462 people in a space rated for just 404. As the band played their opening number, Desert Moon, pyrotechnics ignited the flammable acoustic foam around the drummer's alcove. Flames erupted within nine seconds and people initially mistook them for part of the act. It wasn't until the fire reached the ceiling that the crowd realised that something was terribly wrong. A mere 20 seconds after the pyrotechnics had ceased, Great White stopped playing. Though the fire alarm sounded, it wasn't connected to the local fire department and the venue also lacked sprinklers. So as the fire spread, panic ensued and within 40 seconds the band had left the stage. Six minutes later and the entire building was engulfed. As the fire alarm rang out, confusion reigned amongst the crowd. People mostly rushed for the front door, blocking it and causing further casualties. The fire was reported to the West Warwick Fire Department within a minute of ignition and the first fire truck arrived at 11.13pm. Nearby restaurants and establishments lent a hand, with the Cosette Inn across the street acting as a triage centre. Of the 462 people in attendance, 100 perished. An additional 230 people were injured, while 132 managed to escape unscathed. Among the dead was great white guitarist Ty Longley. Ty Longley played a heroic role during the fire, aiding at least three survivors. Contrary to rumours, he didn't leave and re-enter the venue to retrieve his guitar. In fact, video and photographic evidence shows that Longley never separated from his guitar, nor left with his bandmates. Instead, he used his guitar to smash windows and facilitate the escape of concert goers. Tragically, Longley was the sole member of Great White to lose his life in the blaze. Four employees of the station nightclub were also among the casualties. The Dederian brothers would later face a $1.7 million fine for failing to provide workers' compensation insurance. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST for short, did a deep dive into what went wrong. They used computer simulations and even built a model of the stage and dance floor to try and get some answers. They found that there were no fire sprinklers installed, despite the state fire code making it law. The club got away with not having these sprinklers because of a legal loophole called a grandfather clause. This clause meant that buildings constructed before the state fire code was written in 1968 were exempt from any changes. They also found that the building was covered in highly flammable, 
polyurethane foam. The foam was installed in the club's walls and ceilings for soundproofing. This foam was installed by a company called American Foam, and a former employee of that company, Barry Warner, claimed that they were aware of the foam's flammable nature, but didn't inform their employees or clients. Despite this claim, Warner was not questioned during the grand jury investigation that would follow a little bit later on. By the end of 2003, the club's owners, Geoffrey and Michael Dadarian, as well as Great White's road manager, Daniel Beakley, faced 200 counts of involuntary manslaughter each. Beakley pleaded guilty and got 15 years. In a plea agreement, he agreed to serve four years behind bars, with an additional 11 years suspended, as well as a three-year probationary period. Visibly emotional during his sentencing, he stated that he'd never intended to cause harm and questioned whether he could ever find it in himself to forgive his own actions. The Dadarian brothers switched their pleas to no contest. Michael got a similar sentence to Beakley, while Jeffrey just got 500 hours of community service. The state's attorney general was not happy about how light these sentences were. There have been massive payouts in civil suits, around $176 million by 2021. This came from various parties, including the Dadarians, the state, the town, and several corporations, including American Foam. Escaping the fire didn't mean a return to normality for many of the survivors. Some had been unable to go back to work, breathe easily, or even feed themselves. The tragedy ripped through Rhode Island's tight-knit community. The loss struck especially hard, given the state's small size. The families and friends of those who perished took steps to ensure that their loved ones would not be forgotten. Memorials were erected near the site of the fire, with the most significant being the Station Fire Memorial Park. Opened in 2017, this site features individual markers for each of the 100 lives that were lost, allowing for personal reflection and remembrance. Annual ceremonies are held to commemorate the victims and to provide support for the families. This devastating event serves as a haunting reminder of the potential consequences when safety measures are disregarded, forever altering the lives of those who were there and the community at large. <laughs>